Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer, and today's video is going to be all about the blend and repeat functions in Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. If you haven't seen my Adobe Illustrator for the iPad beginners video, I highly encourage you to check it out. It'll be linked in the description box below. All right, guys, without further ado, let's jump right in. First, we're going to be looking at the radial repeat. To start, I'm going to select my object, go to my repeat menu and select radial. The radial repeat is a great way of creating a repeat in the form of a circle. Radial repeats can be created with shapes, lines, or even text. When you have your radial repeat highlighted, you'll notice a few things. On the right-hand side, there's an arrow slider. This will increase the quantity of objects being repeated along your circle. You can also change this number from your properties panel. Along the inside of the circle, you'll notice two additional arrows. This is how you'll control how far along the circle your radial repeat will go. From the corner of your bounding box, you can scale proportionally. When you double tap any of the objects along your repeat, you can freeform edit them how you'd like. As you can see, any edit that you make to one will be made globally to all objects. Radial repeats can also be achieved with multiple objects, as long as you have all of the objects you'd like to appear in your repeat selected. Next in the repeat menu, you have the grid repeat. With your object selected, you'll automatically create a grid. Much like with the radial repeat, you'll notice arrow sliders. The arrows along the top will control your vertical spacing. The arrows on the left-hand side will control your horizontal spacing. You can also fine-tune any of these values from the Properties panel. Also within your Properties panel, you can choose your grid type. The first is a standard grid. And your second and third options are variations of an offset pattern. You'll see these effects applied depending on the kind of grid repeat that you have. The flip row and flip column will flip your objects along the X and Y axis vertically or horizontally. Just like with the radial repeat, from the corners you can scale your repeat proportionally the white bars along the right and the bottom will increase the area of your grid repeat pattern. Just as you did with radial repeat, you have the option of making any edits to an object or objects within your grid repeat pattern and they will be made universally to all of the other objects. Think of these white bars as creating a clipping mask around your grid. To release the clipping mask from around your grid repeat, go to the object panel select Expand, and then from there, select Release Clipping Mask. Now you can see your full grid repeat outside of that clipping mask bounding from your grid repeat pattern. The mirror repeat is pretty simple. When you select an object or objects, you'll see a center line appear. The small point in the center is where you can move your objects closer or further away from the center line by dragging left or right. The point at the very top of the center line is how you can rotate your repeat. Mirror repeats can be applied to multiple objects as well if you wish. The blend repeat is one of my personal favorites, and it's a way of creating freeform repeats along a path. You only need one object or line to create a successful blend, but you can also blend multiple objects if you'd like. The cool thing about blends is that you can change the types of blends that you can create from the properties panel. You can choose steps or distance 
or smooth color as options. Like we've seen with our other repeat types, the arrow slider on the left and right is available for you to change the number of steps or your distance quantity as you wish by sliding up and down. You also have the option to reverse front to back and reverse the spine. This means you can change how your object overlaps and in what direction your blend will travel. The replace spine function is really fun because you can take your blend and have it conform to a completely new path. Simply have the path that you'd like to have your blend on, select both your path and your current blend, and select Replace Spine. With my blend selected, I can use the bounding box to adjust the proportions and change it to my liking. I can also select any of the points along this blend, change its color, and make edits to it as I wish. I can also use the pen tool to select points along my path, to add points, delete points, or change the configuration of my path to my liking. All right guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in a comment down below if you have a question or if you'd like to suggest some content that you'd like to see next. I post weekly content and I'm super excited to see our community growing. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.